Hello everyone, I'm pleased to present our research result to you. We are from NYCU in Taiwan. The author of this study are Chong Han Wen and Tian Tiao. Our topic is about using Landsat 8 NDVN time series to generate Landsat inventory map using adaptive lead method. This is the outline of my presentation, including introduction, landslide interval detection, experiment results, and conclusion. Currently, large area landslide detection is mainly based on remote sensing data, for example, SAR, and optical images. Most methods use bitemporal image, which means that they employ pre and post event as the basis for detection. The limits of using bitemporal images is highly time dependent. This means that you must have well enough data at a specific time. Besides, if the landslide area becomes bare soil and then recovers to vegetation within the selected interval, a landslide may not be detected. At this point, time series can help. Landslide detection using chronological observation, or you can regard it as binary classification of time series, can overcome the problem mentioned above. There are many ways to classify the time series. For example, dynamic time warping, which uses the entire time series, or the TLCC, time lag cross correlation, which uses triplet as a recognizable subsequences. Another way based on machine learning approach is called time series forest. TSF is an interval-based tree ensemble classifier which splits the time series into multiple random intervals. After extracting some features like mean STD in each interval, the decision tree is trained from those features. Okay, let's talk about proposed method. Landslide often occur in mountainous areas and usually cause sudden changes in land cover. However, the characteristic of landslide include different occurrence times, durations, and no regular frequency. The whole series and shapeless space method usually fail. Taiwan is in subtropical region. We assume that the Significant NDVI change is main caused by landslide, not the season leaf or effect. So, we assume that an irregular landslide behavior includes three intervals pre event, landsliding, and post event. Therefore, it is a more appropriate way to detect a landslide using an interval based method. The proposed method includes three major parts. Image preprocessing, time series preprocessing, and the detection part. And we will generate an inventory map and occurrence time interval. In the image preprocessing part, we obtain landset A surface reflectant image from Google's engine. We also apply QFN to mask out the cloud pixel, and then we calculate the NDVI index. A time series preprocessing procedure include error elimination and Gaussian smoothing. After that, we apply linear interpolation to regularize time series. The idea of LEAP is to extract multiple local extrema points so we can identify the landslide event using delta NDVI. We use a 0.2 relative change as a threshold. In this case, the red point indicates peak, blue represents value and the yellow point indicates the time when the relative change is greater than the threshold. At the beginning, the initial trend is 1 when we are looking for a peak. When the NDVI drops to the yellow point right here, the relative change is greater than the threshold. Meanwhile, the peak is determined. Next, the trend becomes minus 1 which means we will be looking for a value. Similarly, when the NDVI bounces back to this yellow point, we can get the value. The time interval between peak and value shows the landslide event. In this case, there is a significant NDVI change between peak and value. As a result, we can identify the landslide event as the delta NDVI is about 0.5.
in our dataset, there are 149 samples each for landslide and non-landslide. The non-landslide sample is a hillside area, the Hassan Club, including land that is always covered in vegetation, and land that is always bare earth. Since TSF is a machine learning algorithm, the training sample and test sample are 238 and 60 respectively. And this is our time series of test samples. Some parameters of TSF training are shown in the table. As you can see, there is only one misclassified occurred, and all the evaluation indicators show fairly good. However, by calculating the importance of each interval feature, it is found that no feature is important. The curve has large values for the middle indices, as there are more intervals associated with them, as you can see. Such a phenomenon will lead to poor classification results in real case, which will be mentioned later. In identifying landslide time series using lead, four empirical parameters are set as follows. Threads up, threads down are the threshold for relative change as mentioned earlier. A minimum NDVI value was used to ensure that each landslide interval is covered by healthy vegetation in the early stage. And the last parameter is the mean difference of NDVI between select interval. It was determined by the training data. No misclassification occurs when using the lead algorithm, as you can see. Both TSF and lead achieve high accuracy on the test data, but when we put it into practice, the results were somewhat divergent. The main area of lens that in the real scene is about 3 pixels for lens set lead, which means most lens light is relatively small. In the inventory map, the ground truth is showing brown TSF in orange lead in purple. As you can see, it is found that the most area detected by TSF operation are rivers. Although the lead made some mistake right here, but the number is relatively small. In the large lens area, lead has better ability than TSF, as shown in the yellow dotted area. Lead can successfully detect it. In addition, it can be found that the pre-trained TSF model can only correctly extract very few lens line. Only one right here. The IOU index was used for evaluation. If IOU greater than 0.5, it means detected, otherwise omission occurred. We also analyzed the relationship between different lens line areas and omission error. For the lens type that are less than 4 pixels in lens set 8, the omission error for both were huge. But for lens line that are more than 4 pixels, the omission errors for TSF is 0.92 of lead is 0.15. As a result, we found that um, the overall performance using TSF is poor regardless of the lens side area. The discriminative ability of lead is much better than TSF in large lens line areas. Here is our conclusions. First one, GE is useful in implementing the time series data analysis. And the second one, time series NDVI is more reliable than traditional bitemporal images. Third, mm, it is worth mentioning that the omission error of lead in a large scale lens line is about 0 0.15, which can roughly identify the lens line area and its occurrence interval. That's it. Thank you for your time.